OK, uh, I'll get started. So uh, thanks for joining uh, for, the, for this presentation, uh, for such a the, uh, later uh, session of the last day in the OpenStack Summit. But I'm really happy to present this uh, in here uh, to discuss about the, uh, our uh, AI environment with the OpenStack. So uh, I'm Kota Tsuzaki, working for NTT and uh, basically uh, uh, working for also OpenStack Upstream Swift. And uh, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm Takeharu Eda, working at the same laboratory with Kota. And my topic is about AI research. Yeah. So uh, we have the, uh, some sections in the presentation. And the first, the first, is the first uh, one is the, from the Ed Takeharu. OK, uh, at first, uh, this is an outline of our presentation. At first, I'd like to quickly review the why we have started this infrastructure project at NTT Laboratories. And then I explain uh, some topics about AI and deep learning topics. And then we'll switch the presenter to Kota, and he's going to talk about the implementation and deployment on our environment. And then we conclude a presentation with summary and lessons learned. Uh, we've been in the age of AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and we know that AI business and market is growing almost every day. And machine learning behind the AI is one of the key ingredients for this growth. And we, MTT, uh, have main, many application areas for machine learning technologies as one of the biggest telecom group in Japan. So for example, one company in our group offers a speech search application using voice recognition techniques, and another company offers an image search engine using computer vision models, and so on. And driverless cars are also one of the important application area for us because if we achieve uh, automatic driving using deep learning techniques, almost all of the cars will be connected through mobile network. And the graph on the bottom right shows the increase of uh, object recognition accuracy at one uh, very famous competition. We notice that there is 10% increase at 2011. Which this is achieved by uh, deep learning. Uh, deep learning is a branch of machine learning. And uh, uh, Corebo is the unified name of a NTT, uh, AI technologies by NTT. And we have started to develop a computing infrastructure for Corebo. This is CCI, a Corebo computing infrastructure for AI in NTT laboratories. We uh, through uh, the members of Team CCI, uh, we have been still in its very early stage of our development today. So we would like to introduce some use cases during our first step implementation and deployment of the computing infrastructure for AI in NTT laboratories. CCI is targeting to provide R&D environment for AI researchers working at NTT laboratories. The goal of our project is to offer a machine learning environment for researchers to train their models at the scale within on-premise computing cloud with centralized operations and which leads to the hardware and cost optimizations. To use the environment, uh, researchers upload their models and dataset at our on-premise cloud, and each researcher uh, uses uh, their favorite AI framework for defining their models and writing training scripts for their tasks. So we need some level of customization and flexibility in our environment. For operations efficiency, we offer a dashboard and monitoring interfaces for this environment. Uh, we started the services with a limited set of machines, GPUs, disks and so on, and have a plan to enhance the environment based on the actual usage and the requirement of the, our users, AI researchers. 
Okay, we started the first step as a small team. I and another member mainly contribute to the team as AI researchers. And for physical design, like facilities and network, we have two members, including Kengo Okitsu. Uh, he has also contributed to create this presentation material. And for storage design, uh, Kota is uh, Kota designed our scalable uh, storage. And we, have, we also have other two members for operations and monitoring. In total, we have seven members at the beginning. This illustrates the overall our infrastructure. Uh, as for hardware, we set up two clusters for AI applications. One is with Tesla GPUs for HPC, and the other with uh, GeForce GPUs. Uh, GeForce is mainly for gaming, but is available for deep, deep learning for the purpose of research. And the management nodes are set up in Intel Geon boxes. And we combine both SSDs and HDDs for storage nodes. All nodes are connected with InfiniBand for backend, and 10 gigabit Ethernet for services, and one gigabit for maintenance, uh, IPMI. As for software, uh, we employed Ubuntu for all of operating system setup. For AI application nodes, we employed Docker containerization. For management nodes, we employed KVM, KVM, and for storage nodes, we set up OS as bare metal. Okay. Almost uh, all setup, almost all setup is done by Ansible script for the automation and ease of maintenance. From this page, uh, I'd like to explain some topics about user's perspective on the machine learning environment. I just uh, quickly show how five deep learning achieves such incredible performance these days. And I'll explain about some topics, how to cho choose deep learning frameworks and distribution method for uh, distributed training. And then I'll show some example training script based on China ML uh, deep learning framework and implementation in Docker file. And then report the, some experimental results. This, is, this shows the history of AI machine learning and deep learning and the relationships among them. Uh, machine learning is one branch of artificial intelligence and deep learning is one branch of machine learning. What makes the deep learning very different from the traditional machine learning? Uh, I believe there are two main factors which achieves incredible performance in deep learning. One is the existence of big annotated training data, and the other is computing resources, uh, mainly GPUs. This figure, these figures uh, come from uh, Google AI blog. The left graph shows how many number, how many layers in the state of the art uh, deep learning models and required compu computations, a uh, GPU power. One of the latest uh, deep learning uh, state of the art related model inception ResNet version 2 has more than 200 layers in, in the model. So we need many matrix calculation for training such a big deep learning model. The right graph shows how the accuracy increases when we increase the volume of training data. Accuracy increases almost logarithmically based on the volume of training data. So we have a very large, big, uh, very deep neural net, big deep neural network against a very large, big training data. So I believe it's natural to consider to use GPU or a multiple cluster environment for training in such models. There are mainly two ways to do distributed training for deep learning models. One is called model parallelism where the model is divided into several components and the components are copied to each GPUs. And then we train the model. It, it is 
it has been a very popular approach when the GPU memory size is limited. But now we have more than 10 gigabyte GPUs even in GeForce gaming GPUs, so it does not necessarily require to divide like that. The more popular approach these days is called data parallelism, where the copy of the same neural net model is copied to every GPU and different set of data is delivered to every GPU. And then after a single batch training has been finished, the model is averaged in all of the GPUs. And then we repeat the training until the convergence of the training. This approach is uh, very uh, popular these days, and some of our researchers working at NTT Lab has also employed this approach. And, and uh, one good point of data parallelism is that, uh, theoretically, it is guaranteed that this d data parallel running uh, generates the same model when we run four of the data set in a single machine. So we can just simply divide the data and train the model using the parallel, a data parallel. Then, then for evaluation of our environment, we chose data parallel approach. And we, we have also investigated the functions of distributed deep learning. Uh, because this was a little bit outdated, there may be some differences in this matrix, but as a result, we chose a China MN framework, which is a distributed version of China deep learning framework. China is a, a kind of Japanese deep learning framework, which is implemented by preferred networks. And China has a very good uh, flexibility for AI researchers, because researchers often need to change the model structure and the parameters so often, so uh, flexibility to define the model is very important. So we chose the China MN based on China as the first evaluation framework. And usually our researchers has defined their own models in using China. Don't touch, don't touch Mike. No, 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 don't touch. Okay. And if uh, you are going to train the model using multiple GPUs, you need to do some minimal changes to the original training script, script, and then you need to call the script using MPI exec command by specifying the number of processes. In the case of this example, four processes. And the required minimal modification is includes to initialize the communication and set kind of unique device ID for each process and change the optimizer and evaluator for the multiple node setting and divide the data set and distribute the sub data to every process. And then you can start the training. Uh, this flow shows actually, actually uh, processing flow of uh, MPI based uh, training example. At host zero, users uh, call the training script with MPI exec, and then rank uh, all of the processes has started, and then initialize communication, and read the rank zero process reads the data set and divide and transfer them to every all processing and do some uh, usual uh, neural net things like initialize the weights and train the, uh, set up the trainer and evaluator, and then actual training has, has starts. And after finishing one single batch training, uh, we need to average all of the models uh, between all of the processes. For that model averaging, the interconnect is very important because all of the models need to be transferred to the network and need to calculate the average of the models. And we implemented uh, China MN based application as Docker container uh, based on the official NVIDIA's Docker image uh, with CUDA 9.0 and CUDIN 7 and OpenMPI and SSH and uh, NVIDIA's communication library Nickel and Meranox drivers uh, all inside, are set up inside the container. And for doing distributed training, 
we, you need to start all of the Docker containers before training and need to close all of the Docker containers after training has been finished. This graph shows actual processing time when we increase the number of GPUs, comparing the single node and the distributed node. Each host has eight Tesla K80s, and uh, as this graph shows, uh, there is almost no overhead, even when we use multiple nodes, comparing single nodes. This means that there is no, almost no overhead in the interconnect when we do some, several times of model averaging. And this graph shows the, how the accuracy increases when we uh, progress the training, comparing the bare metal and the Docker-based implementation, and almost no overhead by our containerization. As a summary of my part, uh, I, we evaluated the data parallel deep learning performance in our environment, and uh, it, it seems working well. And uh, by employing the China MN framework, uh, almost no uh, very minimal changes to the original scripts required for doing data parallel training. And this approach is easily scalable to multi nodes and GPUs, and almost no overhead in our dockerized implementation uh, in our experiments. Okay, uh, next. All right. Okay. All right, thank you, takara san uh, to describe the deep dive into the AI. From here, I would like to explain about uh, how we can deploy the uh, environment for the GPU and the AI uh, AIs. And uh, the key point uh, from here is, uh, uh, as Takahara said, uh, we need to consider about the, how the GPU can communicate each other for the high-speed network. And then the data parallelism uh, uh, obviously uh, required the high bandwidth from the storage environment. So basically, uh, I would like to describe about the two sections. One is the uh, network topology and monitoring, uh, that is Kengo's work. And then uh, the last part is the, uh, my part of the storage environment. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> can I see this one? <laughs> All right, and uh, at first, uh, what's required for the deep uh, machine learning environment? So that's ob obviously uh, high bandwidth and low latency. That's because, as like I said, uh, the chain I mean, uh, had a bunch of the uh, intercommunications to share the data and reduce the uh, learning data and summarize. So, Anyway, uh, that interconnection is really important for the machine learning framework. And then the, uh, also uh, we need to consider about the GPU temperature because uh, as you know, GPU is really hyper -processed processing, uh, uh, processing machines, but the, uh, that could be eat, could eat a uh, lot of uh, out of energy and uh, that could be a uh, high temperature and uh, that might be unfortunately uh, decreased uh, performance. And uh, in the worst case, that could shut down the GPU servers in our environment. And then uh, this is the first one, the network architecture overview. Uh, that is a couple of topologies we need to uh, consider about. Uh, one is the, uh, out of the uh, GPU servers, likely just the networking. And, uh, and also on the GPU perspective, we need to also, con uh, we, need, we have to consider about the inside of the uh, machine servers. Uh, and uh, I would like to describe much more uh, in the later slides. So, uh, to ensure the high performance, we chose the infinite band uh, uh, with the Milanox one, and uh, the switch uh, uh, had the statistics ports, and each port uh, ensured the 100 gigabps. That is much faster than uh, common 10 gigabps uh, Ethernet, and it also uh, get the get achieved the low latency around the 100 nanosec that really uh, nice hardware to employ. However, 
that's not only enough uh, be, uh, to employ the employing the uh, infinite band. That is because uh, we need to consider about the uh, network topology. Uh, that's because uh, we want to scale out the GPU servers, and then uh, if you you want to just make the uh, 36 uh, servers for your cluster, that's in, if it. That's enough. Uh, we don't have to think about the treat that such a topologies, but we need to scale out. So we need to consider about the, how to configurable uh, for the switch and servers in the, your cluster network. And uh, we chose the fat tree topology that ensured the uh, higher bandwidth uh, in the case of the bus traffic case, and that is designed for. Uh, then add the number of downlinks equals to the number of uplinks uh, like this. Uh, so we are now considering the two uh, layers of the uh, infinite band network. And, uh, and each infinite band had uh, uh, 336 ports. And uh, the half of the uh, port, it can be used to the uh, GPU servers, and uh, the other half uh, should be uh, go up to the, uh, the other uh, event network, like this. So uh, please uh, follow up the uh, links uh, from here, uh, from here uh, to in detail the fat topology. But the, anyway, uh, that ensures the full link boundaries for every node pair. That is really important to ensure the high bandwidth for the GPU computations. And then, uh, I, as I said in the private, uh, uh, several, a couple of slides before, uh, we need to consider about how GPU can be installed in PaaS server. So basically, we want to uh, make the uh, uh, make the large scale mounts. So, uh, and uh, to be effective, uh, we want to the high GPU density per servers. And uh, we finally reached out the, uh, this server specification that have the two CPUs and two Xeon, Intel Xeon CPUs. Uh, each CPU had the uh, four slot PCI card and each CPU connected to the uh, QPI, QPIs. But at that time, we need to consider how we can configure the PCIe slot that can be connected to the GPU servers. That is because uh, we have GPU and uh, also we have the infinite band network cards. In, uh, that should be connected to the PCIe slots. So uh, we have many GPUs and Infinite band. So, how to con uh, configure this stuff? So, uh, this is the, our design goal. Is uh, basically three GPU uh, and uh, one uh, infinite band network card per PCI switch and uh, uh, CPU. That is because we have uh, think, think, uh, sorry, we have thought uh, to the some uh, common norm. Uh, techniques and here. So uh, that is basically two uh, approach, uh, two techniques uh, between here. Uh, one is the direct memory access. So uh, we can assume the uh, GPU can uh, bypass the CPU data transfer if the GPU is in under the uh, same PCI slots. So uh, as possible, uh, uh, so you should uh, d uh, install the GPUs uh, at, as many as possible uh, for each uh, PCI uh, switch. And then, however, uh, if we have only one uh, infinite band adapter in a server, uh, that uh, another uh, GPU can be uh, passed uh, sorry, uh, uh, yep. So 
anyway, uh, I would like to say is that uh, if we employ the uh, infinity band switch uh, per PCI slot, a PCI switch, uh, we can bypass the also bypass the uh, GPU CPU transfer this transfer uh, in the uh, servers. So that results in the yeah. Th this is the uh, same with the two slides before. Uh, yeah, this is the why we employ the such a architecture inside of the server that could completely uh, can bypass the CPU trans data transfer in the CPU layer. So that can be can communicate with the GPU directly each other. And then uh, this is also the uh, same uh, mirror of the different of the page uh, 17. It's the result of Takahara uh, um, uh, 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 evaluation is uh, shows the uh, uh, the high bandwidth of the intercommunication uh, resolve the uh, no overhead in the uh, multiprocessing GPUs. All right, that's network topology. And then let get let me get to the uh, software stack description of the our monitoring system. But I think it's really common case. We don't have much work uh, to. Uh, achieve the uh, capability of the monitoring of GPUs. It's just uh, like you, the pro, uh, OSS, the Prometheus, and the node exporter is each in GPU server. Node exporter is a part of the Prometheus. And we can also see the uh, summarized uh, graphs via Grafana that can be connected to the Prometheus. But one thing uh, uh, we are doing, we was, uh, we were doing uh, in-house is the GPU monitoring script. This is in-house, uh, that red box. Uh, that's called the, some NVD, uh, uh, SMI. That is a tool of the monitoring. So uh, we collected GPU monitoring script uh, periodically, and uh, that f can be feed to the node exporter. But that's only things we do, we did uh, to monitor the uh, GPU clusters. And uh, finally, that works well, and we can you can see the uh, center of the uh, sorry oh this one, all right. And here uh, we can see the GPU temperature uh, to save the uh, high temperature, and uh, we can see how GPU clocks works in the our environment. Oh sorry. So that can be used for for cooling control in the GPU cluster. All right, that's uh, a physical uh, deployment and environment. From here, I'd like to talk about the my section. <laughs> I finally reached out the my section, the storage environment. So storage is the, uh, so this is our requirements. So, uh, and uh, as Takara said in the previous, uh, we need to start catch up the, from small scrum. So uh, we need to have uh, the small uh, storages uh, as possible. Uh, but the, that should be scalable because the, as you know, the GPU and the AI could be take a big data, like the images or some logs or something, uh, whatever you want. But uh, and uh, that also requires the massive parallelism for data parallelism, so uh, we need to scale up, uh, scale out on the storage system, on the perspective of the storage environment. And uh, the last thing is most important thing is the easy adoption for AI framework. That is because I think uh, the most of the recent AI framework just lead the uh, data in the via the POSIX file system. So, uh, so we need to uh, take the POSIX file system uh, to for the connectivity of the AI framework and storage nodes. And I hope S3 can be used, S3 API can be used in the future. And another consideration on the, our uh, constraint is that since we are the small scrum, uh, we have 
some variety of the hardware polios. That's because that is reused for, from another uh, department. So we need to consider about how we can configure it about the uh, uh, high-speed SSD or uh, just a SSD or HDD. So how can I reconstruct the uh, storage environment for us? And then on this stage, so. Uh, as Takara said, we are now in earlier stage in the CCI, and uh, I decided to take a two types of approach to uh, support the, uh, our storage environment. It the uh, traditional uh, NFS servers with just a RAID with the NVMe volumes for home that completely uh, can be used uh, at the uh, project's file system for the data sharing, but uh, we need also the scalable storage. So I tried to make uh, OpenStack Swift. <laughs> That's my favorite one in the OpenStack. <laughs> and uh, that can be used for the scalable st storage uh, across the nodes uh, in the storage environment. And uh, I chose uh, SwiftFS uh, that is described in the next slide. Uh, that can be scalable fused file system uh, in the OSS. So uh, in here, uh, I would like to exp oh, just <laughs> I would like to explain the OpenStack Swift and the SwiftFS. Swift is the, uh, the oldest project of the OpenStack, and uh, that can be is, installed, with, uh, that can be used with the common hardware like the uh, uh, Geo servers and uh, for it, and that equips uh, several uh, disks, uh, hard disks, SSDs, and uh, that's completely scalable, durable, and uh, that's easy to maintain for us. And then Swift SS is, I think, everyone doesn't know the Swift SS, but the Swift SS is uh, one of the few based file system uh, for on top of the Swift. And that, but just a, a, a fi uh, POSIX-like file system, so that is not full POSIX. But uh, the most uh, great things uh, for us is uh, that uh, uh, store the file as an object with the one by one mapping. So uh, if you start the uh, file, uh, via the SwiftFS, uh, that is just an uh, object in the Swift that can be readable via Swift uh, API. So like this, this is the, uh, our diagram. So uh, we, I, I built the uh, OpenStack Swift to, uh, cluster for us. And then uh, the AI frame, the OS, the GPU servers uh, uh, can uh, mount the Swift via SwiftFS, and then AI framework on top of the GPU servers can read the data uh, via POSIX API uh, and uh, save the data uh, inside of Swift. Then uh, that completely works well uh, for now. Uh, if uh, we test it, uh, when we test it to tested the machine learning uh, with this environment. All right. OK, uh, let's summarize a uh, bit of the deployment work. Uh, at first, the network uh, perspective, the current our network topology works where as expected, that because no overhead of the parallel GPU computations. And the Prometheus and the in-house GPU monitoring script can also work uh, to uh, see how uh, what's uh, happened in the, our GPU clusters. However, I, we are still uh, in the middle of the state of the progress. That is because we don't have the, any uh, script to uh, task assignment uh, from the uh, GPU temperature metrics. So we need to uh, still consider about how to uh, uh, assign the uh, GPU work, uh, sorry, uh, machine learning tasks to the uh, GPU servers according to the uh, GPU temperature. That's our plan. That's still work in progress. 
And uh, in the storage perspective, the good thing is the, uh, we can use the simple configuration for each the mature uh, software, but because uh, NFS is mature and Swift is absolutely mature for us. And, uh, that, uh, and the Swift can be scaled out, uh, and uh, that can also work well with the parallel read uh, for machine learning. Yep. And uh, basically, we don't have any problem with the AI framework read uh, data from the Swift FS. Uh, that's a good point. However, uh, I still think about the bad thing is the uh, less durability on the NFS that because that is not just a laid system. So we need to think about more how durable it's, uh, it is. So how, how we can make it durable more. And, uh, and one more bad thing is that we have the, uh, a couple of the uh, storage systems, NFS and Swift. So we need to uh, maintain a couple of systems. So that complexity is the absolutely uh, minus one, I think. So, then uh, what I can do, I, I think I can, what I can do is uh, uh, I would like to test the proxy FS for our environment. Proxy FS is uh, built uh, open sourced by the Swift stack uh, that uh, ensures the full project file system on top of the Swift. Uh, in the decision timing, uh, we don't have tested for the proxy FS, so we can not we couldn't show the proxy FS for our environment, but I still think ab about to uh, migrate the, our NFS environment to the proxy FS. And uh, yeah, but uh, I think still, I, I have still uh, concerns uh, for the, how to scale the lead on the distributed machine learning uh, with the proxy FS, but uh, the uh, session, in the Monday, that was, it happened Monday, uh, that's Swift Stack uh, Joe, Joe Arnold, that is Swift Stack's uh, CPO, uh, describes how to scale the, your parallel lead uh, with the proxy FS, so you can learn the, uh, how to do that in the, this video link. And uh, we need to think about uh, any other solution can be usable for our environment, but still I need to learn more. So please discuss about, uh, please discuss with me uh, how we can progress the storage environment in the future. All right, that's <laughs> two minutes, sorry. No question time? <laughs> okay, uh, the, this, the, the, what uh, we learned from, from my, our experience. So, you say? It's okay. okay. <laughs> it's okay? All okay, right. So, uh, the first two things is uh, from uh, Takahara. Oh, okay, I, I, I will say. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm just a uh, researcher working out this project. So, actually, I do not understand physical or software low level layer design, but it works well and it's nice to have to do such types of project as Scrum with experts from each their own uh, areas. And I also implemented some uh, dockerization for chain element and found that there is no off the shelf complete environment publicly available on the web. So we need to some level of customization or changes to the publicly available files and they need to set up the, your own images. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, that's really good thing uh, for us. So and uh, also, I would like to point out that we can build the uh, AI stacks with the common OSS that we can see in the web internet. So uh, I'd like to. So that sh uh, should be a huge win to use the common OSS and sharing experience in the upstream community. That should be nice in the all of you and our works. Thank you. Questions?
So we just just ten seconds. <laughs> When you were talking about the uh, averaging of uh, results um, uh, from from GPU computations, uh, does this averaging uh, do you do it via the storage or the demons some, somehow communicate directly uh, over the network uh, over I don't know uh, memcache or uh, uh, yeah. whatever. Uh, Yes, uh, that is achieved by uh, network communication algorithms called ring or reduce. Uh, we do not need, need any single parameter server, but we just send each uh, weight or gradient for calculating the weight to neighbor processing, and the transfer delivery works like a ring, and then we can calculate all, uh, the average of all the weights trained separately. So this is a kind of famous algorithm in MPI world. And, and maybe another related question, because the net network you have built is pretty, uh, it's lossless, it's uh, very fat, I would say. Do you have any uh, feedback data on um, to which level it can be loaded with a real, um, mm -hmm. with a real load? Yep. The real, uh, yeah. are, are you ab able to saturate this network with the, this setup? Um, <laughs> <laughs> could we publish the results or something? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we've run several uh, distributed training on the environment, but actually we did not verify any low level transfer, especially in the switch or something. So I need, we need to do some testing again. <laughs> For that, I think. Yeah, benchmark. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you for coming. Thank you.